Hello, good morning or good afternoon, everybody. This is uh, Sean Benison from SalesEye. I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to join today's webinar. Hopefully you've uh, managed to log in correctly and can see a good reflection of our webinar presentation on your laptop stroke desktop. And we're going to get straight into it today. We've had a, a, most of you join. There are quite a few people on the call today. So please, uh, as I walk through this presentation, there will be opportunities for you to ask questions. Uh, and we've got some support agents here to answer any questions as we go along uh, in today's session. In terms of timing, we, we've put aside 45 minutes to an hour for today's presentation. Uh, realistic expectations is we will get to around 35, 40 minutes with an opportunity at the end for you to ask any questions or for us to answer any questions. Um, and if you could make a note of those and, and collate them for later on in the session, uh, we will answer them as quickly as we can. So today's topic of webinar is why data is the new oil and how that data can fuel your sales team to success in the marketplace. And whilst we were thinking about a topic of conversation, I think from a sales eye perspective, it's one of the most heard of uh, topics of interest at the moment with business owners, directors, and salespeople alike. It is how can we make better use of the information we hold within our business today. So for those of you that I have spoke to, My, my name is Sean Benison. Um, I've been at SalesEye for a number of years as well as having uh, repped on the road for a number of different sales organizations. Uh, if you'd like to reach out personally, then you'll find my profile on LinkedIn as well as an email address there on the bottom left-hand side which you can contact me on uh, should you have any questions that you need answering throughout the presentation. Also, you'll see on the right-hand side of your screen, there is a GoToWebinar control panel, and this will allow you as attendees to the webinar to ask any questions. Uh, don't worry about the, the content of the question we've heard, as we've heard them all over the years, uh, but you will get a response very quickly from one of the agents here at this end to answer any other questions you may have. And I think going back to the topic of um, the webinar today, data in today's century is very much like oil in the late, the late 18th century. The, the reason we came to a conclusion that this was a good topic is we see a lot of comparables with the way data is used within businesses today uh, and, and that's of how oil was used in the 18th century. And we, we can vouch for the fact that for those businesses using data and can see the fundamental value of usage in their business are learning to extract and garner huge rewards that don't just stem from the sales team but they pass back very quickly through other areas of the organization. So today we just want you to have an open mind to think about how you use data in your own business today uh, and give a fair reflection of you if you feel um, some of the insights and knowledge we share with you today could be well placed within your own organization. So why is data like oil? It's the big question. And I suppose we've come up with a few assumptions here of how the similarities affect a business in today's day and age. So first and foremost, like oil, it's below the surface. We all know we've got some great business DNA sat within our respective organizations, um, but ultimately it's not there for the taking from day one. It's all about being able to identify whereabouts in the business the, the best forms of data sit. And you need to be willing to Dig deep within different business systems because the data that's going to help you propel your business forward isn't always the most clearly accessible from the surface of your business. Secondly, it needs to be extracted. So like oil, uh, and when we watch uh, documentaries on discovery, you'll see all of the big uh, capital equipment and the specialized tool that industrial companies will use to extract oil. Once you've identified exactly where the oil is, Ultimately, it needs to be extracted, and from a data perspective, that is all around using very specialized tools, some of which you may use within your business today, some of which we'll share with you later, could harness a, an additional level of value for you. But many of you will have seen or may be using today technology like a business intelligence system or, again, a CRM, contact management system, within your business. And once it's been extracted, we need to remember that, in fact, the data is generally in a very crude format. And that could come across as a, a report, it could come across as a spreadsheet, but ultimately, the data is going to be very useless 
once it's been extracted, unless you understand how you can refine that data to really fit a purpose, whether that's for the internal, external sales teams, whether it's for management, or cross-compartmental divisions within your business that would find sales data of use. And ultimately, it needs to be stored. And the reason it needs to be stored is you need to preserve data in an easy-to-read format. It needs to be stored for future use so that you can, I suppose, go back to understand the history and the, the, the behaviors and the patterns of what's happened within your customer base. And ultimately, where we come in and where we place a lot of emphasis is around the exploitation of data. And it's like the fuel that should drive your business forward, the fuel that goes into the race car to make sure that your, your company stays ahead of the competition. Um, and for those businesses that really do turn a, a blind eye to data and the importance of data, you know, they will be left on the hard shoulder. Today is all about businesses that are trying to maximize the exposure of data to, uh, to propel themselves forward. So you'll see a number of familiar names on this, uh, on this page, and we, we've kind of gone through some of the high-level platforms in which salespeople are exposed to today where data can be collected, many of which will all be on today. So you'll know of platforms like Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, you'll have trade press and journals. Data comes in many different shapes and forms, some of which are metric-based, some of which are very visual some of which are very trending, and your business and your salespeople have access to so many different avenues or uh, of areas where they can collect data from. It's what you do as a business to maximize the exposure of that data to make it a very competitive edge for your, your sales team. So you'll see things like uh, your ERP solution, that could be Sage or SAP, Access Dimensions. Um, you may have a CRM system in place today, which is being used to record conversations and call history notes and meeting notes with your clients. Is it being used to its fullest extent? Uh, that is a question still to be asked. And businesses today will be involved in lots of different trade shows, potentially doing competitions for their customers, really to track and analyze the way that your customers engage with you as a business. So the data is there for the taking. It's collected in, in very myriad formats. It's about how can we help organizations to present that data to the, the right people at the right time for the right reasons to really grow business moving forward. So the big question, and I imagine the reason why many of you have come today to see the webinar is, is how does data help the sales team? How can we use data to really fuel our team in the field and internally to make sure that we're getting the mo most efficiency from our front end commercial teams today? We came up with a few challenges of when we speak to managing directors and sales directors and executive leaders alike of some of the biggest challenges when it comes to data. And I think many of them are familiar to salespeople as well as management. And one of the biggest challenges up front is how do we ensure we minimize the risk when it comes to wasted sales calls? So we've done a number of research projects over the year which have given us an indication of uh, how businesses changed from a very old full field sales based uh, sales environment to a lot of the interactions now taking place over the telephone and it's incredible to find that a lot of the companies that still operate in this way um, don't recognize the value or the opportunity that every call presents to them whether that's inbound into the office or whether it's outbound to prospective customers uh, we want to help you understand how you can access the most valuable data to make sure that every call has a purpose, has an agenda, and ultimately it produces some, some good results for you. And here's the situation. 67% of people are still missing their sales quota. Uh, now, if you ask the salesperson, that may be because they feel that their sales targets are too high, but in general, there are a number of factors which play into the fact that targets are there and are often being missed rather than hit. 14% of the salespeople that we spoke to are receiving or, or that are receiving reports and spreadsheets and analysis and business data are still having to retrospectively sort through that data manually. Now there is a cost attached to that and I'd, I'd ask you to think for one moment of what a typical cost would be per rep per day and if the majority of their time is spent trying to interpret and use the data you're sending out to them, how can we make that a more efficient and streamlined process throughout the business? 
a lot of the salespeople we spoke to actually struggle to acquire timely information. So when we speak to clients, they will have a workflow in place whereby a salesperson could receive a, a monthly report, even a weekly report. But I think being honest and the open assessment is your, your customers' buying behavior and their patterns and their trends may change far more frequently than a month. So what we don't want to get into a scheme of doing is having untimely information where the salesman is walking in assuming he is well informed, well in fact the business has changed quite significantly since they did the, the analysis of data presented to them. So it's about getting as real time as possible to really glue to the customer and move at the same pace as they do to make sure that the salesperson becomes a partner rather than just a, a valid supplier to that particular business. And 50%, 58% of people, dare or not, really do struggle to identify when a customer's orders are dropping or not. So, albeit I think the, the, the figure is fairly masked with maybe a bit of embarrassment in that more businesses actually would admit to the fact it's very difficult to stay on top of what customers are doing. But in general, we had a very open consensus and over 50% said it was a real struggle, a real challenge or headache to get to that level of detail, especially when you're dealing with lots of accounts and selling lots of products. And here are some of the factors around some of those challenges. So we all know of the milk round call ethic. Um, and again, this is just pinpointing some of the, the challenges or factors that business leaders shared with us were the reasons why wasted sales calls were being made. And, and milk round calls are always there. They're always the calls that the salespeople want to make, uh, possibly just to boost metrics, to hit KPIs. Perhaps the customers live on patch. It's very easy and convenient to visit that customer on a, a Friday afternoon. Um, or in fact, maybe they just haven't seen the customer in a while, so they schedule a call to go in there and see if they can wing it and talk business and hopefully walk out of that meeting better, better prepared and better informed. But ultimately, it's about understanding the customer needs, not just from an emotional perspective, but from a commercial perspective as well. Uh, it's about the salesperson being able to identify exactly what the customer needs are and matching their provisions to what the customers expect of them. In today's day and age, we've moved from a very sales person-centric environment to a very customer orientated view whereby the salesperson really does need to align in more ways than most to really start to get to grips and under the skin of that customer account. Hunters or farmers, takers or makers, call it what you will, uh, a large percent of salespeople today are still taking orders without really having the time or the inclination to look for valid cross link up or switch sell opportunities. And generally that comes down to point four, as the skipped homework factor been, um, been played around with. So salespeople, especially on the road, you know, we deal with over 30,000 individual salespeople on the road, and generally speaking they are between four and six appointments a day. Now does that give the salesperson in today's day and age the, the available time needed to make sure that each meeting is prepped for thoroughly, to make sure they don't end up talking about the weather or the latest sporting fixture or how the trip was to the office to come and see you. And the lack of resources. So a lot of salespeople will have the available resources to help them sell more effectively, but generally speaking, even if they are available to them, it's about that time, it's about the, the inclination to make touch and, and see if they can bridge those gaps and, and have everyone working towards the same end goal. And naturally, there will always be a resistance to change. It is about trying new methods and if it's always worked, uh, then why change it? Well, if it's always done in this way, the results aren't really going to change too, too, too many ways either side. So what we're trying to position and what we'll show you later on is hopefully a new way of doing business that helps all salespeople, regardless of age, sex, gender or background, to sell in a very consistent, a very fluid way that really does engage with the customer. And we wanted to come up with a bit of anatomy of a, a sales call. And fortunately, a lot of our product managers at Sales I get to go out and, and see before and after scenarios with prospect businesses as well as existing customers. And just have a think about how you feel your salespeople would structure their sales calls walking into a customer account or a prospective customer account. A lot of the time, that first 20% is about getting the engine revved, about opening with some rapport and some small talk together the conversation flowing. We may then be talking about upcoming sporting features or what the recent weather has been like or what my previous meetings have gone like in the, in the previous couple of days. And then the 50% is blended across the, the, the previous three. It's mistimed or misaligned sales attempts 
do we know how to hold what I would classify as constructive tension with your prospect? You're there to talk business, and in many ways, FaceTime is very difficult to get now with prospects. So it's about saying the right things at the right time with the right meaning and agenda behind them. So what we want to move to is a more blended view of conversation where 45% of the time is spent cross-selling and adding value, adding new lines that the customer may not be aware that you sell into the accounts. It's about anticipating a customer's needs based on their historical data, their historical buying patterns. But it's about blended small talk and rapport building. And some of the most proficient sales reps we see on the road, you won't easily be able to identify where the blended small talk and rapport comes into a conversation because they use it fluidly throughout the different elements of the conversation. And this is where data comes in. It's how can data put an end to wasted sales calls? Just think about this in your own business today. If you could get your salespeople to act quicker, to act with a, a laser-like precision when they go in to see a customer, data is going to empower them to act on new information so that they can be the first to the new sales opportunity and not the competition that are knocking on the door every single day that you're not. It's about better targeting, and targeting is an area where you can really gain a lot of leverage early on. Better targeting by slicing and dicing data, first and foremost, gives you the, the structure of content for what you want to push out to your prospects. But you can segment your customer base and run very purposeful campaigns that improve profits. So for instance, let's take a full English breakfast scenario where you're selling food and drink into a client, and ultimately that customer may know you for the best sausages in the land. Well, what the salesperson wants to be able to do is identify those customers that should in fact be buying the eggs and the beans, as well as the sausages, and not just take the normal order on a regular pattern basis. It's about being able to slice and dice, understanding the customers that would require a more profitable mix of goods, and then going in there fully informed speaking to the right people about the right content at the right time and hopefully coming out with the right results. And that's all about uncovering those opportunities, those opportunities that can take your business from 2-3% growth month on month through to, as you'll see in examples later on in this demonstration from Northwest Tools, double digit figures every single month, year on year, with consistency and sustainability behind it. So there are new opportunities, as, as few as you may feel like there are within your business, by looking within certain areas of your business data and extracting that data in the right way, you will be able to give every call a purpose and ensure that time isn't wasted in the field and that opportunities do start to flow through the front end of your business. Challenge two is probably as applicable to business owners as it is to salespeople. It maybe factors into the reason why we saw earlier so many salespeople miss their target but also where some of the frustration comes from at the sea level within a business. So visibility is about being able to put the lenses on, to be able to look at your business in a new way that isn't just columns and rows full of metrics and data. It's about being able to bring your business to life. And as we mentioned earlier, 58% of the companies we spoke to still struggle to spot which customers are dropping and where the next sales opportunity lies. And if the management can't see the opportunities, then it's even more difficult and challenging for the salesperson to recognize that at a front level. And again, the situation, we started to interview some prospective clients. We found that almost a quarter of the respondents to our questionnaires didn't have any insight into sales metrics whatsoever, which hopefully puts all of you on the webinar today in a slightly better position than most. Um, many of salespeople that we speak to say that the visibility is their biggest daily challenge. How do we get fingertip access to what our customers are doing to make us more professional, more proficient in the workplace, and ultimately helping us to sell more and get paid, uh, get paid at the end of the day? And again, 13% of customers there, an interesting metric, believe that sales really understand their needs. It's a very difficult balance point for a salesperson to go in there really aligned with the customer rather than being aligned with their own objectives and their agenda, pushing onto the salesperson rather than having that sell the customer pull themselves into the salesman's world, which is always an ideal scenario. And this lack of understanding, the lack of visibility, the lack of being able to deliver 
significant levels of value to that client above and beyond your competition is the reason why most businesses hemorrhage up to 18-20% of business year on year. Now if you're looking at that figure thinking ours is far less, just think to yourself that that figure may also be masked by new business coming through your door, so it is very difficult to spot when actually there's some of those smaller customers, some of the more loyal customers may be slipping away from you as your priorities um, find themselves elsewhere. And again, going back to the anatomy of visibility, many of your salespeople today will get these three points. When did I see you last? What did we talk about? When am I seeing you next? And, and for many of the sales managers in today's environment, that will be the type of metric they will want to understand. How, how active, how uh, busy are we in the field? So that's already been done. But finally, what, what we're not seeing a nut off is, what has the customer purchased? How can I drill through their data to understand actually what do we supply that the customer has not purchased and which of those product groups should be being bought? So again, a lot of our customers are selling thousands of product lines to hundreds if not thousands of customers and the full basket of goods that is available to the client is often not taken because that client isn't educated, there hasn't been value built around those new product groups which could have significant advantages to their business but also give you a bigger piece of the pie. So it's about the sales rep being able to blend purchase history and trends and analysis and behaviors with the things that we're tracking on a daily basis in our CRM, i.e. when did I see you, what did we say last, and when am I seeing you next. So we can build a, a double-edged sword here where we're talking about three really important factors rather than just the standard um, CRM detail. And why is that? Well, first and foremost, most of the information is siloed to salespeople. So information can be held from within one department within purchasing, another department within sales admin, and another department within accounts. You've got varied levels of detail available to salespeople, but it's always locked away. It's always difficult to get hold of, and, and salespeople aren't going to have the time or the inclination to go searching for that information um, if it is going to cause time delays from their side. Paralysis by analysis. We also have this terminology talked about a lot in, in current meetings and the reason for that is when salespeople do get information too often than not it's open to interpretation you could give one report to ten salespeople and you could get ten different synopsis because the salesperson is interpreting that data in lots of different ways and sometimes it's too much for the salesperson let's put the reports to one side and let's run on our gut instinct are there enough hours in the day we complain that salespeople aren't sufficiently prepped for every single meeting, but again, when your salespeople are doing four to six meetings a day, they've got busy schedules, they don't have the time to be sifting through reports. So to be able to give them data in a readable, understandable, and actionable format is surely going to make the difference between your top performer and your bottom performers in the field of sales. And old habits die hard. We understand that a lack of visibility uh, is going to encourage salespeople to fall back into old habits as they really don't understand where to prioritize their time, where to prioritize their focus to make sure they're seeing the right accounts for the right reasons at the right time. So how will data and how will using data help you minimize the risk of limited visibility within the business? And I think from my own perspective, being a sales rep for many years, it's about getting under the skin of that client. It's about knowing more about their business than possibly what they know themselves. It's about being able to have that 360 vision of how the customer is performing and starting to educate that customer, controlling that customer sale to educate them on the reasons why you should be doing more business or at least the business should be on an upward slope rather than a downwards. So it's about embedding yourself into that business to become a trusted advisor and using data really to help the customer understand their position with you as a supplier. And it's also focusing on insights rather than just metrics. It's about analyzing the data to get actionable information from so that you know exactly what the next course of action should be with that customer and you drive them through from a prospect to a, a trading account, hopefully within no space of time at all. And record everything. Think about businesses that are uh, recruiting new sales reps, also businesses that may be letting go of a few salespeople. They leave with DNA and that DNA really should be stored within your own organization. Now again, I imagine you all probably use data in very different ways and some recording of information will be held on spreadsheets, shared servers, 
there is probably a notepad in each and every one of your salesman's bags which is recording the information that you should really be holding within your own organization to then use when we talk about proactively targeting certain accounts. So that DNA, it's impeccable to have within your business. Don't let it sit with on a, an A4 pad of paper. Let's find a solution whereby you can record everything internally and hopefully made for a more streamlined workflow of sales. No fact, just gut instinct. And in fact, it's a, it's a bit of a touchy subject for many business owners. Uh, they recognize that data-driven decisions are going to be much more productive than decisions made on gut instinct. But again, as your own salespeople come in many forms and, and, and shapes and different personalities, salespeople tend to know best, and it's normally their gut instinct that they'll follow, albeit the, the results and the competency of those gut instincts aren't always right. And that can make the difference between a company taking themselves to 10, 15, 20% growth month on month, and one that's on the brink of insolvency looking for a, a panic station way to get out of a, a problem that they find themselves in. Gut instincts are faster. It's natural, can be made in a split second, but unfortunately, it's not always the right one. Salespeople still might be throwing spears. When a machine gun is available or a sniper rifle is available, they're still throwing spears. It's doing things that have got them as far as they are today. Uh, I suppose from a business and a data perspective, it's about finding new, more streamlined and efficient ways of doing things. Is there limited data to access? Is this what is, is, is making salespeople make decisions from their gut? Do they have access to the right level of data to question their gut instinct? Or are they just being hopeful and you know, hoping that you know, if it's got me so far today, then I'm just going to hope for the best and, and continue to go with my gut instinct, maybe based on 10, 15 years of experience within a certain industry type. So how can we put an end to gut decisions with data? Well, first and foremost, it's about limiting the risk. So data is going to give you accurate information. And this minimizes the risk as you have a better understanding of the outcome. Higher profits, data-backed decisions are naturally going to be more productive. So this will directly impact the bottom line. It's about getting the revenue per rep figure as, as high as possible and minimizing the risk of, of customer loss or sales leakage, if you will, when customers start buying their products elsewhere. And the gun ho, -ho approach, it, it wastes time and it's not targeted. And using data may help you focus and your salespeople focus on seeing the right people for the right reasons and really starting to flow with what's important to the business from a, a strategic angle. So with all that in mind, when you use data correctly, we've got some great examples later on today of how businesses have, you can really start to hold in the palm of your hand the predictability of where future business is likely to come from, or at least how you're going to achieve growth within your existing business accounts. So it's about fingertip access, it's about having the sales reps feeling empowered, uh, having them feel accountable for their accounts, and making them mini CEOs within your own business. All of the businesses, the majority of which use data, find it useful. Simple science. And the primary objectives when we asked many of the business leaders, why do you use data? There was a, a varying but a, a quite consistent thread across all of the results. So firstly, it's about being responsive to the dynamic. Your industry is changing as much as your customers' organizations, and it's about being able to be adaptive, responsive to the market dynamics, and to be first to the sale rather than last. It's about analyzing customer behavior, bringing a customer account to light, being able to drill down and drill effortlessly through their data and really to improve the customer service. Have your salespeople acting much more professional than the, uh, the other suppliers that may be going in to see the same customer. And here's a view of a most businesses' data. You're only using a small amount of the data, and the rest can be unstructured, random, with no obvious links, and ultimately it becomes wasted. So we think about how big retail outlets and how big commercial entities will analyze data to better interpret how the salespeople can engage with their customers. But ultimately, you're only using a small fraction of the data that is available. You're tapping into a, a very valuable resource only ever so slightly. And what some of the systems out there can do can help you to drill into that data, refine it in a much more obvious way. So that data actually becomes more like the next page, structured, 
easier to identify patterns, simplify for the user, so that regardless to their, their competency on different platforms of technology, they can find the information useful. They can use it on the go, on the fly, on any web-enabled device which they have to their fingertips. And let's take some of the big three, Tesco, Morrison, Sainsbury's, Audi, they all do the same. And this is something we've seen an emergence of over the last 15 years. It's about being able to offer loyalty to the customer, but in return they gain valuable insights into that customer's buying behavior. Where do they shop? What do they spend their money on? How do they walk around our store and how can we make that journey more profitable for everybody involved? So there's over 30, 38 million club card users around the world at the moment with Tesco. And as you'll probably recognize yourself if you are one of those 38 million is the personalization based on the insights that Tesco gained from you as a customer are often used to boost cross sales and that's the way data can be used in a standard wholesale distribution and manufacturing space. It's about reduction of inventory, making sure are we selling the right products, are we stocking the right products or indeed are we making the right products for that customer. If you've ever hired a car then you'll know of Hertz and Hertz again are a real progressive business that have used data to really project themselves or propel themselves to the front end of that marketplace. So they operate in over 146 countries and again what it helps them to do is identify where decisions can be made in, in half the time. It's about visibility of their customer satisfaction. How do we get a customer to come back to Hertz every single time that they want to rent a car? And how do we identify potential areas for improvement? Where are we exposed? And again that comes down to how can we create better targeted, more profitable campaigns to understand where our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats sit geographically on our trading locations. And the godfather of all data, and I think this is something that will uh, be agreed with very much moving forward as uh, personalization starts to come into play from all of the, the background data analysis Google has done over the years. Uh, they are constantly developing new products and services on data algorithms such as AdWords and Core Search, which many of you may use today as a business as, as part of your marketing efforts. And they know when to evolve or discontinue a product. They know when it's a trend or whether it's a consistent core area of their business. They are using data to stay abreast of changing usage of technology and how can we adapt and how can we use data in different formats to match the, the, the user base that we are targeting. And again, we'll see this on TV, how the businesses and big media outlets use data uh, to customize the ads that you see day to day in individual households based on demographics and viewing patterns. So you need to extract data and refine data to gain value. And I think that's a common thread throughout this presentation today. How do you do that? Well, there's several platforms that you can look at in the marketplace today, some of which will be, uh, will be used within your business. And what I want to do for the next two or three minutes is just show you a slightly different way that you could bring your business to life. And again, we're not the only solution out there, there are plenty to choose from, but I thought I'd bring in some screenshots today just to show you how you can consolidate some of the business data that you're currently sitting on today within your business. So you can see dashboard-based technology is a great way to make it very familiar to the user where each individual user has a very personalized view of their world, where you can start to consolidate different patterns and behaviors uh, and, and see performance across different areas of your business. You may also want to start bringing in things like proactive campaigns. So if you can identify the things that are important for you as a business owner, whether that be customers buying product A but not buying product B, customers that are dropping off in spend by more than X percent over the previous time period. It could be those customers that have maybe bought from you every single month for the last 10 months, but haven't placed an order this month and it's the 25th. Getting a business intelligence tool or a, a data analysis tool that can start to proactively notify the right person of their accounts, which are breaking their typical buying behaviors or patterns, um, really does start to motivate and, and bring up the morale within the sales team but it also gives you the confidence that your sales team, team people are all singing off the same hymn sheet. And again you want to see that data geographically not just in a, a very metric orientated view. 
so that you can see within a Google map, hopefully you can see there on the right hand side, how I can start to really pinpoint my areas of exposure, how my sales team can use this type of insight to then start to plan their time effectively, go to see the customers that are more likely to place business with us and that need to be seen rather than just a scene out of habit. And again, CRM tools, diary management planning, it's about being able to be easily uh, viewable to the management of the business to understand how busy are we as a team? How can we move information effortlessly from one department to another? How can we make sure our salespeople stay on top of their quotations, their follow-ups, their inbound, their outbound prospect activity? And again, something like a Michael's planner would help sync with an Outlook calendar to really make sure that no, no, no trick is missed. And again, if a salesperson was to call in sick, or, or indeed you have a new salesperson in the business, then they are able to see exactly what was due to be completed on any given time. And again, data proficiency, being able to drill down through your data to identify at a SKU level item exactly what is going on within your organization. Where are we up? Where are we down? What are the reasons for that? You can produce reports today and you can, and you can slice and dice information in spreadsheets but ultimately you want something fingertip, something accessible, something online and offline that the salesperson can use to really get to the, uh, the, the core principle of why I'm coming to see you as a customer. And being able to use drill down capability within a, a business intelligence tool makes that process so much simpler, which it, it would literally save 10, if not hundreds of hours a month. And mobility. Every single salesperson now more than more than any time in the previous 10 years has got access to smart technology, smartphones, iPads, Surface Pros, iPhones, laptops, desktops. How can you give the salespeople the tools they need to go and do their job effectively on the road? And the answer to that question is by finding a partner that has invested a lot of technical debt, if you will, in mobility of business intelligence. So that data is sat within your business. You can refine, extract, and use that data to the best possible advantage. For the salesperson, they want something alongside them, a companion, if you will, which will give them the insights they need to really go and deliver above and beyond their targets. And just before we finish, I thought I'd be bringing in some examples here of businesses that have adopted and really embraced how technology can affect their business. Maxis Tires, a leading automotive tire manufacturer and distributor, um, really wanted better customer insight. Charlie Rawson, who was their IT director, had purchased many different platforms in the past. And again, I think he uh, described certain solutions he uses as, uh, as quite clunky, quite antiquated, and quite out of date, especially for the salespeople that are working within that business. So for him, um, using business intelligence, probably the best IT purchase he's made in the last couple of years. International Timber, part of the Sangaban Group, again, a great tool helpful for them to make better decisions from a purchasing and also from a sales perspective. They can get valuable insights which empowers their salespeople to really make better and faster choices out there in the field. And Northwest Tools, a very, very strong success story. Um, began as a small tooling distributor and wholesaler in the northwest of England. Um, running spreadsheets, were plowing into data in various different forms, various different people or personnel within that business. They wanted more sales revenue. They wanted to take their business to a double-digit growth organization. And Ian Entwistle, who is still the current managing director there, has, has gladly given business intelligence and especially our contribution to, to his growth, which are 11 to 14 percent year on year for the last four to five years each month. Again, if you feel that you've seen value today from how data um, could benefit and impact the performance of your business and your sales team, uh, by all means, we'll, we'll give you some contact details at the end of this session. But if you would like to see SalesEye, if you would like to recap, if you've seen it before, or you would just like to have a conversation around the data that you currently hold within your business and how to maximize that usage, then please do get in touch and we can do uh, a number of online uh, meetings to, to establish that. Other than that, I'd like to thank you in the short space of time that you've spent today. Hopefully it's been of use and there's been at least a, a small amount of value taken from today's session. Uh, the details are there below and uh, thanks all for your time.